In Istanbul, in the alley behind a seafood restaurant, there once lived a young rat named Fawn. She slept during the day and sniffed around for garbage after dark. Fawn was six months old. The guy rats thought she was cute. Fawn wished they would leave her alone. She liked to watch the clouds pass over and dream of a bright, clean place where food grows on trees and rats don't have to be sneaky. She knew the outside world was dangerous, but she just had to look. So she waited for the quietest part of the night. Then she ran to the end of her alley, straight out into the wide world. Thwack! A beggar tried to smash her with his crutch. Vroom! A motorcycle screamed past. She ran straight through the thundering traffic to the darkness on the other side. Lost, my dear? A big old rat loomed up. He was wet and smelled like sour milk. I'll take care of you. She ran on into the darkness. She found an empty pickup truck, climbed into the back, and hid under a paper bag. When she woke up, it was morning. The truck was moving. Then it stopped. A door slammed and footsteps came toward her hiding place. Go, she thought. She jumped. A woman screamed. A tomcat woke up, blinked, and took off after her. She flew on until the street ended and the water began. She went over the edge into a crack. Konnichiwa, whispered a rat voice. What? replied Fawn. There was a rat squeezed in behind her. Reiko desu, it said, touching Fawn's shoulder. Sniffing, Fawn could tell Reiko was a girl. I'm Fawn, she said. Fawn and Reiko hid until dark. Then they went to find food. They came to a beach that was littered with good things to eat. Food wrappers, fresh seaweed, and fish dried crispy by the sun. A full moon rose. Fawn turned slowly round and round, amazed. Beautiful, she thought to herself. Life is good, thought Reiko, but I miss Japan. One night, Reiko went off in a new direction. She led Fawn to a place where five huge ships were tied up. Reiko sniffed one. Then she sank down, disappointed. She couldn't tell Fawn what she was sniffing for. Soy sauce. Ships came and went over the next few days, but none of them smelled right. One night, Reiko broke into a smile. She led Fawn straight up the gangplank into an air hole. They followed the smell of soy sauce to a darkened kitchen. Fawn heard pattering feet. The place was full of rats. A giant one reared up. Anata, said Reiko happily. He sniffed her. So, she purred. Another big rat came up to Fawn. He sniffed her. Fawn did not purr. She was looking for the way out. She ran all the way back into the night. The next day, Reiko's ship was gone. Now it was Fawn who smelled the ships. One ship smelled like rubber. Another smelled like tar. She was waiting for one that smelled like tropical fruit. Sure enough, a rusty old freighter sailed in that smelled like coconuts and ripe mangoes. Soft music came from the portholes. This was it. Climbing in was easy. The doors were all open. The sailors seemed to be taking naps. Suddenly, a wet pink muzzle snapped over her head. It shook her back and forth. Some creature was eating her. It flung her against the wall. There it sat, grinning, waiting for her to move. It barked. A man appeared. Good boy, Cubby, don't eat that filthy thing. Fawn sprinted down the corridor towards the smell of food. The dog galloped after her. She squeezed under a door just in time. A greasy old rat was sitting in the corner. One of his eyes was swollen shut. I'm Fang, he said. This is my kitchen. Just then the engine started. Get out, barked Fang. Fawn ran under the stove. Fang peered in. She bit his nose. He screamed and ran away. The ship began to move. Soon it was rising and falling, tipping one way and then the other. 
Fawn curled her toes into the floor, but still she slid. In the morning, she looked for a place to sleep. There were holes along the bottom of the wall. Some had been padded with fluff by long-ago rats. She picked a nice one and went to sleep. A growling sound woke her up. Cubby was trying to squeeze his nose into her hole. Good boy, Cub, said the man. You found it. He set a trap outside her hole. She knew what a trap was. For two nights, she stayed inside. Her throat got dry. Her stomach hurt. On the third night, she decided to break out. She stepped on a corner of the trap. Nothing happened. She tiptoed around the cheese. There was a raisin smashed on the floor. She gobbled it up. There was plenty to eat in the kitchen, and Fang seemed to be afraid of her. For the next few days, she was very cautious. One stormy night, the trap snapped itself halfway across the room. Things calmed down. She and Fang became friends. Where are we going? Fawn asked him one night. Jamaica, I guess. That's where I got on. Are there fruit trees? Yes. Then why didn't you stay? Things are great in Jamaica, he said. There are papayas everywhere. There are also a million ants and worms and toads. You climb up for a papaya and everybody else is already there. It's a zoo. He gave her a long yearning look. This kitchen is a nice place, a great place to raise kids. Will you marry me? Hmm, thought Fawn. One day the ship's horn sounded. They slowed down. Is this Jamaica? whispered Fawn to Fang. Fang sniffed. I don't think so. Jamaica smells like flowers. Fawn made up her mind. I'm leaving anyway. When she peeked under the kitchen door, there was Cubby. What does a dog hate, she wondered. There were plenty of stinky bottles in the kitchen. She scrambled up and knocked one off the shelf. It smashed and formed a horrible-smelling puddle. Fawn dove in. It burned her eyes and took her breath away. She squeezed under the kitchen door, straight into Cubby's grinning face. He licked her. Ow! Gasping, he smacked his burning lips. Fawn staggered across the deck and jumped into the sea. The water was rough. Luckily, Fawn discovered she could swim. She spotted a rope hanging down from a ship. It took her a half an hour to get there. Just as she grabbed it, the rope began to rise. A few seconds later, Fawn found herself in the arms of a sailor fishing for crabs. Hey, Gooch! he screamed and dropped the rope. Skitten water! Fawn jumped into a ventilator shaft. It smelled like a doctor's office. Uh-oh, she thought. She found the ship's kitchen. It was spotless. No crumbs, no spills, no rats, not even a spider. Suddenly, the lights flashed on. Bang! She was caught in a net, scooped up in the air, and examined. He carried her to his cabin and hung her net on a hook. He put in a carrot and went to bed. She knew he was trying to poison her. In the morning, he made a cage with some wire mesh and a pair of pliers. He put Fawn inside with the carrot. Still, she wouldn't touch it. The third night, he took out the carrot and put in a radish. Fawn was awfully hungry. After he went to bed, she nibbled on a radish leaf. Then she ate the radish. It did not harm her. The cage life lasted many weeks. The sailor brought her lettuce, grapes, and cottage cheese. He seemed to like her. What's wrong with him, she wondered. One day the ship stopped. The man packed his things. He grabbed Fawn's cage, left the boat, and got on a train. It rolled along for many hours. They stopped at a red house in the country. A nice old lady met them. They walked to a place that smelled great. Horses, pine needles, and freshly plowed earth. The sailor put the cage down and opened the door. Freedom? Here? For a long time, Fawn froze. Then she tiptoed out. The people did not stop her. She ran to a big old building. 
This barn turned out to be a wonderful place, warm, safe, and full of food. Horses and cows, pigeons, and a quiet family of rats all lived peacefully together. One rat in particular caught her eye, a tall, distinguished gentleman named Lars. He noticed her, too. He checked to see if she was warm at night and made sure she never lacked for food. The two of them, Fawn and Lars, began to look for chances to be alone. Soon they became the parents of twelve pink squirming babies. Every day Fawn learned more of Lars's language. Finally, she told him the story of her voyage from Istanbul. He was amazed. As they strolled through the meadow one evening, he smiled. Now that you know our language, I have a story for you. This country is called Norway. We Norwegians are sailors. We cross the seas carrying our dried fish. Norwegian rats have settled all over the world. You are from Norway, although you never knew it. Now you're back. He touched her whiskers with his. Then he went to check on the children. Fawn smiled to herself. She sniffed the wet grass, gazed up at the clouds, and knew in her heart she had come home. Fawn and Lars lived on to the ripe old age of three. They had many children. Those children had children, and their children had children. Some of them traveled to far corners of the globe. One of them probably lives in an alley near you.